So not too long ago, I did a Mimogul deck profile, but that build was more like a pile build, how you can incorporate a bunch of different engines. And in that video, you guys commented and wanted a pure deck profile. So in today's video, that's exactly what I'm bringing you guys, a pure Mimogul deck profile. Now I do want to clarify when I say pure, it doesn't mean that all 40 cards of this deck are going to be just Mimogul cards. There is still going to be some non-engine and some engines that make a lot of sense in this deck, but it's as pure as possible. At the end of the day, we want to build these decks to be as competitive as possible. And if you're just playing 40 Mimogul, Google cards let's be honest that's not the most competitive way to build the deck we want to be competitive with this deck but this is still as pure of a Mimogul deck as you guys are going to see so with that being said let's get into today's video and show you guys what a pure competitive Mimogul deck profile looks like let's go so just before we get into today's deck profile, I do want to mention that this is as pure as I can possibly make it. There's still going to be some few engines or some few card choices here that are not technically Mimigul. So yes, this is a pure deck more or less, but there are some options in here that I think really boost the power of this deck and are really important to play in this deck. All right. So just keep that in mind. Hey squad, Spankle here to bring you guys a very important message. Do you guys see these Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon and Dean Smith directly on deck boxes I have here? Well, you guys can win them for free. All you guys got to do is head on over to my Instagram page where Card Castle 3D has partnered up with us to give away three different custom deck boxes, which means three of our squad members are going to be winners. All you guys got to do is head to the link in the description, follow the instructions, and you'll be entered in to win one of these three insane deck boxes. So big shout out to Card Castle 3D for partnering up with the Spanko squad today. You guys can win one of these three amazing, beautiful deck boxes. Check out the link in the description. And with that, let's get back into today's video. But first things first here is we're playing one master. I don't like playing two of this i know there are options where you can play two but i think playing one is perfectly fine it's not that great in your hand honestly a better normal summon would just be mimogul dragon so that's why we're maxing out on our dragon dragon is one of the best normal summons in the deck master you're always going to be getting off of your throne anyways so one master three dragon we're playing three arch fiend three fairy and one slime that's all the names that i'm playing i'm not playing the new guy i think armor is a name i'm not playing cerberus the reason i'm not playing all these different names is because they're not that great and in a 40 card deck like this one you don't really want to see the names as much as the other cards that you're going to see because some of your other cards are like one card starters uh, as dragon is a one card starter like this is the one that you want to see otherwise you don't really want to necessarily see these so you really want to cut down on the mimical names as much as possible because you really want to get the job done once you get the job done with these cards turn three it comes back to you you're going to be able to otk and push for game so that's why you don't want to be breaking on stuff like cerberus or armor or just all of these different names right maybe if you're playing a 50 card deck you can start putting more names in but this is a 40 card main deck over here so that's why i'm just keeping it as tight as possible we are of course playing three mimigul dungeon though one of the most important cards in the deck as well as one terraforming to get us to a dungeon we're also playing three maker and three room room is one of those cards that you could potentially play two of you don't have to play three room but i really really like three room because if your combos get stopped essentially getting to like if you have a room in your hand you can still kind of do things on your opponent's turn which is really important that's why i really like three room now in the side deck i'm going to be showing you guys a side deck but typically in games two or three if i know i'm going second i'll side one or even two of these out sometimes so that i can make room for some board breakers and other cards of course but going first you always want to have room and the fact that you can play three of them means that even if your combo gets stopped you still have access to room potentially right it just gives you more opportunity to have access to room and room is one of the most important cards in your deck so that's why we're playing this package over here maker is a one card combo dragon is a one card combo we're really maxing out our one card combos over here and then all of the important cards last thing i want to mention though one more thing i want to mention is um this is just going to be an honorary mimigul monster so kashira mimigul this is one of the most broken cards in the deck the fact that in this format specifically this card is so good because all the extra decks are really tight a lot of extra decks are playing one ofs so like against all the fiendsmith decks they're playing one sequence one requiem one desiree and if you're just banishing the sequence essentially your desiree and requiem become kind of dead cards in their deck so that's really good just with one unicorn alongside maker you can make a really really powerful combo where you're essentially unicorn ripping on your turn and then you're going to be able to unicorn rip again on your opponent's turn so being able to rip two from your opponent's extra deck with unicorn is absolutely insane it's also an extender for you and it searches kashtira birth so one of the best things about kashtira birth and kashtira unicorn is uh i showed you guys a combo video actually recently if you guys want to go check out that combo video you guys can see how these two cards are insane but basically if you just go with unicorn maker you special summon your unicorn you go maker you get an extra deck rip right 
in your combo, you're going to eventually, of course, search your birth, and then you're going to link away the unicorn, and then you're going to be able to bring it back with your birth, which is absolutely insane. That's how you get two card reps. And then birth is also really good because on the field, if your opponent activates a spell card and it resolves, you can banish three cards from your opponent's graveyard, which is really, really relevant in today's format. So birth is also an absolutely insane card. And then lastly, we're just playing the one Azorne. This is a card that just helps you beef up your end board. That's why I'm playing the Azorne. You could play the other silhouette trap. Uh, I think it's called silhouette trick trap trick i can't remember the name but uh, the other trap that you search off silhouette rabbit because uh this card is really good or the other one is not bad either but this card is really good as well because it just gives you an added layer of disruption for essentially no cost right like if you open this card okay sure you just set it if you don't open this card your combo gets to this card anyways so you might as well have that extra additional layer of disruption here as well but yeah kashira guys i get it this is a pure deck more or less but this engine is just way too broken to not play now i want to mention as well because you have one card combos in this deck this deck does have room for a decent amount of non-engine I want to go through the non-engine now the thing is i keep referring to these combos there is a combo video on the channel if you guys want to check it out i'll leave a link in the description below for you guys because i keep saying one card combo one card combo and if you guys don't know what the combo is or what the combos are because there's multiple of them then uh, make sure to check that video because i think it's really helpful but for the non-engine here we're just playing the most generic ones and the best ones so three ash of course ash is just the most generic three shifter this deck can play shifter does not lose the shifter you don't care about shifter and the fact that you're also playing like a shiro cards also means that you don't care about shifter so uh shifter is absolutely busted this is a turn skip a lot of time if you're going second and you just activate shifter or even if you're going first you can start off by activating shifter and then doing your combos and then this card is absolutely insane right so shifter is just an absolutely crazy card in mimigul and three imperm these are the nine hand traps that i'm playing i'm playing some cards that are not just hand traps but these are the nine hand traps i think they're just the most best nine that you guys can be playing right now droll and lockbird is a decent one but i'm not playing droll because we're playing shifter i don't want to be stuck in a situation where i have shifter and droll that's also really bad to have both of those because one of course you can't even activate droll under shifter but two shifter a lot of the time against most decks is a turn skip anyway so it doesn't really make sense to have two kind of dead cards in your hand with shifter and droll whereas if you just open one of the other it's better and then imperm and ash both work on the shifter anyway so if you need that extra layer of disruption that's what imperm and ash are here for but then we're also playing one thrust two talents one called by and one prosperity that's it for the non-engine instead of playing three more hand traps i'm playing three of these and uh, these cards are really good for a couple of reasons. Called by and Pot of Prosperity, of course, are really good just to protect you. And this is for consistency. But Talons and Thrust are always live. And the reason they're always live is because if you're going first, you're going to be able to put a monster on your opponent's side of the field, flip it and activate its effect, which makes your Unicorn live. That's why Unicorn is so good. But it also makes your Talons and Thrust live, which is really powerful because then you're going to be able to Talent, potentially draw two cards if you need to draw two cards. But if you don't want to draw two cards, not only are you setting up a board, but then you can also rip a card out of your opponent's hand with Talent. Thrust is really good because it gets you to talent and gets you potentially to imperm as well. And if your combo gets disrupted somewhere and you activate thrust because your opponent has a hand trap, then you can actually thrust for Mimigul room. And that's really important as well because like I said, even if you don't draw the room, having access to room through thrust or through just three room in general is really important. So thrust and two talent, I think, to round off the main deck here. It's 40 cards on the dot, but these cards are absolutely insane in Mimigul. Moving on to the extra deck, we are playing two of the giant Mimigul as well as two of the Mimigul throne. These cards are, of course, really important in Star your combos and going through your combos and on top of that the throne is a disruption on its own as well so these two cards i think i would like to play two of these i don't want to play one on one i feel like one on one is not enough because you can go into them turns two and turns three so two and two i think is perfect we're one kikiganshi fucho i don't even know if i said that correctly but if i did let me know in the comments but this card is really good as well if you just don't have anything you can just sit on this one ensemble robin this card is really really good in this deck and i actually underestimated this card for a long time but i think it's really good because what will end up happening is with your Mimigul Dungeon, a lot of the time, you'll have a monster face down defense position on your opponent's side of the field. Now, Mimigul Dungeon says any player who controls a face down monster cannot normal summon monsters nor declare an attack. Now, why is that really good? So, let's say your opponent has a face down monster they can't normal summon, but let's say they're able to special summon, whether it's with Diabella Star, whether it's with Etelly, whether it's with just so many different cards that can special summon a card. On some Blue Robin has a really cool effect where when your opponent special summons a monster, you detach a material, target one of those special summon monsters, and return it to the hand. So, you're locking them out under your normal summon, and then you're going to be able to bounce them from their special summons as well so this card is really really good when you get that lock off we're playing one assembled nightingale because it can attack directly which means that you can make downer on top of it and then you can make zeus on top of that if you're not able to otk and beat your opponent you can just make zeus as another form of disruption which is really good it's very easy accessible with your ensemble nightingale over here so i really like the zeus package 
then of course we're all playing level one monsters so one relinquished anima one haggard lizard dose this is a card that i don't see a lot of people playing but i really like playing it the reason i like playing it is turns two and turns three if i have something like a unicorn in hand and i want to summon it what you can do is you can use two monsters on your side of the field make lizard dose and then lizard dose has an effect where you can sack the card and draw a card but then it also clears up your field which means now you can special summon your unicorn which is really good as well so i really like this card just because it gets you a draw and it gets itself off the field gets all your bodies off the field playing one ip one sp one Silo Hat Rabbit. Silo Hat Rabbit is really good, of course, because you can end on this on all your combos, honestly, because you just take two extra bodies to make this, and then uh, you're pretty much having that extra layer of disruption, and then one Axis Code Talker for when it comes up. It doesn't come up too often. A lot of the time, you're able to beat your opponent without it, but when it does come up, it's really, really good. So that's it for the extra deck. It's a 15-card extra deck. Now, just before we get into the side deck, I do want to mention that uh, side decks are always going to be up to personal preference. If you guys have a locals that are all combo players, you make sure to side for a combo. If you have a locals that's all uh, back row players, you make sure to side for that. But I just want to show you guys a skeleton of a uh, side deck that you guys can play that I think is really, really powerful. So three Droll and Lockbeard, it's really good in today's format. If there ever is a deck that Shifter is not great into, I usually side out Shifters for Droll and Lockbeard. This is stuff like Kashtira. This is stuff like Labyrinth and uh, other decks as well where Shifter is not that good. You just side in Droll and Lock. We're playing the second thrust we're main decking one but we're playing a second one the reason we're playing a second one in the side is because we're playing some thrust targets so one harpy's feather duster for back row two raigeki two dark ruler no more two evenly matched so this is all for going second over here as you guys can see the deck is so good already going first because of the combos it can do so you need to side pretty heavily for going second and it doesn't matter if you're going second if you're not able to otk your opponent because in combination of dark ruler plus evenly matched or imperm because you're playing imperm in here imperm plus evenly matched can be really really good as well because it breaks a lot of boards just with these two cards and then of course regeki we all know how powerful regeki is so i really like these breakers i think breakers come in a lot of the times when you're forced to go second you side out a lot of engine for example like you side Side out room like i talked about if there's a uh, matchups where kashir unicorn is not that good into you can side that out if you're going second you can also side out the statue because that card is not really good going second it's better for going first so there's a lot of cards to side out for these cards going second and it becomes really powerful in that sense and then we're also playing for going first three barrier and one different dimension ground different dimension ground of course you can search it off thrust same with d barrier but i like playing 3d barrier because against a tenpai matchup you really really need this card i'd rather just draw it if i don't draw it of course i have thrust but i'd rather just draw it because if i do have to thrust i would rather have the d barrier and then go Go thrust into like an imperm or go thrust into a room so that this way what you're doing is you're not only do you have barrier to stop your tempi opponent but you also have thrust for room which could also do damage against that matchup as well so i like playing three barrier because i want to draw this card this card is really good but it's just another thrust target for you because the decks that lose to shifter it's kind of like a force shifter for you because uh, if you're going uh, first against like uh, let's say fire king or snake eye or whatever and you really want to see shifter but you don't see shifter you can also side this in, right? And then if your opponent has a hand trap, you just get to this. So it's like, hey, I didn't see shifter, but you know what? I get to essentially a pseudo shifter here, which is really good. So that's it for the side deck. 15 cards, of course, here as well. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on a pure competitive memorable deck profile. Yes, you're still playing the Kashtira package, but honestly, the Kashtira package is so important in this deck. It might as well be a memorable package at this point. We all know, oh, Dominus Impulse is a card that kind of counters it. Okay, I get it, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't play this deck just because that card exists. This deck is still really fun and still can be really, really good in today's meta. So if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We do deck profiles, combo videos, vlogs, all that good stuff, product openings, it's right here on the channel. So if you guys want to stay tuned and watch all of that, make sure to subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you with that Spanko sign out. Peace.